Hey everyone, my name is Daniel and in this video we're going to take a look at Microsoft Copilot Studio plugins and I'll explain to you what are the different types of plugin options available in the Copilot Studio and which one of these you can use as an extension in your Microsoft 365 Copilot. In addition, I will also tell you what is the difference between a plugin and a plugin action because yeah, they both exist and as a bonus, I'll show you how to use this rebrickable connector so you can go and get information about all your Lego parts using the part number. It's pretty awesome. So as you can see, it is very important for you to watch this video to get an overall knowledge of how Copilot Studio plugins work and where I can go and leverage them across my entire tenant. But first, here's my intro video. So when it comes to the Copilot Studio plugins, it's actually classified as two different types. One is the AI and the other one is the conversational. So when it comes to actually the plugins for conversational, that is where it allows the maker to give descriptive text to the Copilot. And this is what I found very close to what we actually did back in Power Virtual Agents. So conversational plugins is really not a very new thing. Yes, there are enhancements over there, but that is basically it. And these plugins are similar to the standard topics in Copilot Studio that you used to create back when it was still Power Virtual Agents and now in the functional Copilot. So think about it this way. Conversational plugins is not something new. That is something that you and I used as topics back in Power Virtual Agents days over here. And this is also what helps us to make a fully functional Copilot. All right, so now let's take a look at the AI plugin. And the good thing about AI plugin is, even though it is broken down into four different subcategories, some of these you are already familiar with. So the first one is actually the AI builder prompts. That's part of the same AI builder that we've been doing in the Power Automate Cloudflow side. And some of these you might already be familiar with. And speaking of Power Automate, those cloud flows that you have built in Power Automate, the existing ones or any new ones that you wanna do, you can go ahead and pull that directly from the AI side into your Copilot Studio. Now there's also the custom connectors. Again, you are familiar with this. You might already have these existing custom connectors or you might have a need to build some new ones and that's also part of the AI piece. Now what's really new is the integration of the open AI plugins. This is 100% genuinely new. Now it's still in the earlier phases and as you and I know the open AI plugins is part of the chat GPT background. Um, so there's a lot more involved over here. We'll take a look at that more in the future, but this is just the overview. These are the four subsections of the AI plugins and the good news is some of these you're already familiar with. All right, so we took a look at both of these different types of plugins available at a much larger scale. What I want to take a look at is some of these plugins that almost sound the same, but they're not. And that is the conversational plugin versus the plugin action. So the conversational plugin, we just had a look at it and here's what the overview is. It is used to extend to your Microsoft Copilot. So you basically create it in the Copilot Studio and extend it into the Microsoft 365 Copilot site. There are some limitations right now. For example, this Copilot does not support rich text formatting or any multi-turn interactions. In addition, it can only be built at a per Copilot level. It's not part of the entire Copilot Studio. You've got to first go and create that Copilot on over there you can go and add your conversational plugin. On the flip side is plugin actions. So plugin actions is part of the Copilot component such as topics, but here's where it really shines. You can go ahead and create a single plugin action and use it multiple times across multiple topics. And think of how much time that's gonna save you. Because in each topic, if you've got a node or a set of nodes that you're gonna be reusing, well, go ahead and build a plugin action and then call that across multiple of these topics. And the beautiful thing is that the plugin action can handle both the input and the output. So it's as if one plugin action can handle up to two nodes worth of job. And similarly, this also can be built in a per copilot level only. So now that you have a good understanding of all these different iterations of plugins, let's actually go into the Copilot Studio and see how they function over there. So we're now in our Copilot Studio and right over here is where we see plugins. 
So remember, we are not inside any specific copilots. We are kind of outside in the main copilot studio. And so this is where you can actually see those AI plugins. And remember, I showed you there were three of them. So on the left side, when I go and click on the Power Platform component as AI plugins, this is where you go and see three of them. So the AI Builder, the Power Automate for custom automation, or the extensions, basically you're going and creating those custom connectors, all three of those are right over here in the Power Platform component as AI plugins. And in the future, I'll be deep diving in a lot of these, but I just wanted to show you that when you are in the Copilot Studio, how these show up as plugins specifically in the AI plugin. Now remember, in the presentation I showed you, there were actually four of those AI plugins. So three are here, and the other two, this is where it is. See the Open AI plugin. And there's a lot of other plumbing work involved for this, but the Open AI is part of the AI plugins that is available. Now, when it comes to the conversational plugin, for that, we actually have to go into an existing copilot. So I'm going to click on my copilots. I'm going to go into this existing copilot, which I have. I call it as friendly copilot. And once I get in over here, right at the bottom, you see that extend Microsoft copilot pre preview. If I click on it, right over there is conversational plugins. So when I click on the conversational plugins over here, you can now go ahead and create your own conversational plugins. By the way, it's pretty neat that even at this level, you can also go and see what your AI plugins are. So that's the good thing that you can actually see your AI uh, copilots at the higher level, at the copilot studio level, or inside an existing copilot, that's where you can see the AI plugins as well. Conversational plugins, well, you have to be inside a specific copilot to do that. And I've got examples built over here, which I wanna show you. Now, if you go and try to create a conversational plugin, it almost has the look and feel of as if you're creating a topic. But there are some differences. For example, this one does not have the options to go and add your own trigger. Something else is going to trigger over here. And it's important that you actually go and give it a good description because that description really helps in going and creating the trigger. So what I wanna do is show you one that I've already created. I'm gonna come out, I'll say leave, and right there, I've used a plugin to get Lego parts. And this is pretty neat. In case you haven't played with it, the connector that I'm using is called Rebrickable. Take a look at it. And that's what I did, is in this plugin, it does a very specific thing. In some conversation that you're having with an end user, that end user is going to give you a Lego part number. Moment you get that part number, now I'm going to go ahead and leverage this conversational plugin. The conversational plugin specifically leverages this rebrickable connector. It goes and gets information from that, comes back, and then presents it back to the end user. This is all that the conversational plugin does. But the neat thing is with the conversational plugin, now I can go ahead and actually extend that and it can be leveraged outside in your Microsoft 365 Copilot. So there you go, right over here is the first conversational plugin that I have. So you see this conversational plugin, well then what is a plugin action? Well, let's go take a look at it. What I'm gonna do is now click on my topics and plugins and over here you will see that we've got the topics We've got the system and there's also the plugin actions. This is a little different than that conversational plugin. So when I go and click on the plugin actions over here, I have also gone ahead and used that same connection, but this one is going to be used at your topics level. And that's important because now I've gone and created this copilot. In this copilot, I'm gonna have multiple topics for very specific trigger reasons. But in all of those, I might have a need to have a node or a set of nodes to go and pull some information from this rebrickable example. And instead of me going in and building those nodes again and again, let me go and create this plugin action to save me the work of adding those nodes again and again. So for the plugin actions, when I go and click on it, over here, it's a little bit more different. We click on plus create, click on the plugin action. And over here, you start by saying which one of these actions tied to any connector that you're gonna use. So in my case, I actually went and did a search for rebrickable. I did that search and it gave me all of these outcomes that I have. And the specific one that I used for my scenario is to go ahead and get part details. Basically part is you tell what a Lego part number is, it goes and gets you information. So when I click on it, it comes to the next section and it's going and making a connection first to that connector, comes back, making sure that all the authentication is good. And then I go and click on next. And then after that, it's saying, okay, here is your very specific action for that plugin action. And you go ahead and add all this other information where what is the input? 
how do you want the output and the output effects that you have. I'll show you the one that I've already completed. I'm gonna go and say leave. Right over here in this plugin action that I did, I am going to go and do the exact same thing, is go ahead and get part details. That's the description. In my input, I am going to go and get the information from the user. So when the user gives me a response, which means the user is typing in something, that activity response, the user actually types in a part number and I'm gonna go and take that part number and use Rebrickable over there. And then the output, I'm actually gonna be a little smart. I'm gonna say, hey, respond to the user after running this action and let AI dynamically generate a message for it. It's just the default setting makes it a little bit easier. But do you see the importance over here is that when you go ahead and create a plugin action, you can hit two birds with one stone. You can go ahead and do an input node and you can go ahead and put an output node all as one plugin action. So it's gonna save you some nodes when you're actually going and building those topics. And let's go and test this one. So I'm gonna go outside to my topics and I'll go and select an existing one that I have. Here it is, this is a Lego one. Now this is a full blown drop topic because it actually has got some triggers and based on that, it is going to go and ask me a question. The question that I'm asking is, hey, give me a Lego part number. And over there, the user is going to go and type that in. That's when I go and get the user's response. Save that response over to a variable. And guess what? The next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and leverage this plugin. So this is what I did. I went and selected add a new node in my call and action. Now I go into the plugin. And when I go and click on this plugin action, you can actually see all the work that is happening. And this plugin action is pretty awesome because it's saving us so much additional work on all the additional nodes that we have to put in. I go ahead and give it my input number. That input number is basically that variable that we went ahead and captured from the user's entire response. And then it's going and giving me all of these outputs. Now it's not gonna give me all the outputs, it only gives me what that API can actually pull from the source. Uh, and you will see how in this case what all it is. So once I get that information, I'm actually going and pasting a message. Now, the message was an additional work that I put in because I actually wanted to go and even see an image. Because remember, this one plugin action will serve two purposes, me giving an input and it automatically goes in and gives us an output. And in our case, we let AI went and described it. So let's actually see how this works. Just to make sure that I'm actually going ahead and triggering this one, for my message, I'll just go and type, for my message, I'll just go and type in Lego. Moment it does that, it directly goes ahead and triggers this one topic. And now it's asking, what Lego part number are you interested in? Well, I'm gonna go and say 3030 and click on enter. And now that plugin action immediately works. So in the plugin action, it is going ahead and getting that information and here it comes. It actually gives me two responses. It says the details of the part with the number 3030 are as follows and it gives me a good breakdown. It actually tells me what is the name of that part. It's telling me a plate which is four times 10, it's category ID, a part image, part URL. And over here, I knew that was only gonna give you URLs or hyperlinks. So I added this additional load to actually show me the image. But notice what happened. This section, which is actually an output, I did not have to write a note for that. That came directly from this plugin action. And that's what I was telling you, that plugin actions are actually a huge time saver. And that's what I love about it. But the beauty is that I have created this plugin action once, and I've gone ahead and used it in this topic. You can go ahead and use that in other multiple topics as long as they are inside the same copilot. So hopefully this video gives you a good understanding of what copilot plugins are and the difference between the plugins and the plugin actions and how it is important to start using plugin actions because it's going to save you so much time by using that instead of reusing all of those nodes again and again. Hopefully this helped you. And as always, keep using Copilot Studio. Hello, hello, hello. So if you like this video, go ahead and click on that subscribe button and smash that like button. Also, if you have a few extra seconds, can you go and put in a comment, either say something nice or give me ideas for my next video. And until then, see ya.